You know you love it. Okay. Before we do the, the giant blue logo, who, uh, who here, if I can see through the lights, who here is excited about uh, hooks? Anybody? A few people. A few people. Who here is, is, is worried that all of their teammates are going to be excited about hooks and rewrite everything by Monday? Yeah. I'm kind of both of these people at this point. Um, historically, I've been the, the chaos causer. Hey, guess what? Over the weekend, I rewrote everything using the latest, greatest thing. Everybody should be thrilled, right? Yeah, not so much. Um, but anyway, we'll get to that. So FramerX uh, is one of the things I'm going to be talking about. Also, um, neurodiversity, which is probably the wrong word. Basically, I mean like the ways in which people are not exactly the same. So, over the last few years, there has been a, a Cambrian explosion of new kinds of tools. Not just new tools, you know, Visual Studio Code and whatnot, but new kinds of tools. Um, so, FrameRex specifically is not a development tool. Uh, it is for designers, for designing designs. And you can also think of it as a, a decision tool. What does that mean? Um, so for, for yourself and for the tribe. So if you think, if, if you work at a company, you're just the only person that works there, and you get to make all the calls, you decide everything all on your own, you can do it all on your head, you can do it in whatever tool you want, you can do it however you want, you don't have to answer to anybody. How many people live in this universe? Yeah, that guy. And so, you know, it's great to be that guy, but I'm not that guy. Um, so, also I'm going to be talking about, you know, we're all, you know, pretty much the same. Uh, but, you know, there are, are some tiny differences between people. Uh, for example, the, the, the way we see things, the way we observe, we take in uh, information and organize it in our heads and out loud at y'all. Uh, and how we make decisions by ourselves, for our own, own purposes, and for with our team. And also, um, what drains people and what energizes people. You can have the exact same situation will energize some people and drain other people. Which is kind of annoying, but it's for a good reason, I'm sure. Um, and it all boils down to, you know, the happy brain chemical feedback loops. Kind of like, you know, the same way you train a dog, uh, we train ourselves accidentally. So there goes slide number one. Let's go to slide number two. Um, let's see. So first, let's get into, uh, oh, there we go, into decision making. So, ooh, uh, that's no good. Uh, so, you can think of decisions exist on a, in a two-dimensional plane. It's not true, but you can think of it that way. So, you've got your, you know, your red blob and your blue blob. Um, let's think of the blue blob as being like your X dimension, horizontal. And that is all about um, does it make sense and does it work? And where it would be like, should we use React? Should we switch to Vue? Should we implement hooks right now? Well, you know, let's think about it. So first you have to know, does it work? You know, there's one option. It works great. The pieces fit together. It makes sense. But that's not the only option. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Some things can be confusing. They make no sense, and they don't fit together. So that's the, you know, the one dimension. The other dimension is, is it valuable? You know, that's the, the Y dimension. So it can be up here. You can, you, it, it is loved. It is awesome. It is, it is greatly appreciated. Or it can be down there. It, you hate it. Everybody hates it. Everybody's miserable. So who are we talking about? Everybody. So there, there are um, multiple, multiple dimensions within those dimensions. You can have it two ways. You can be like, well, it works for me, and I hope they like it. 
Or you can be all obsessed with, everybody likes it, but I haven't really thought about, does it actually work for me? Ideally, you would balance both of those things. Or you can be all like, well, I love it, but I don't really care if it works for anybody. <laughs> I just love it. Or you could be all obsessed with, well, it works for everybody on the team. I'm making sure that everybody it makes sense to everybody. But do you really stop to think, do I actually like this? And you might think, well, who cares if you like it? It works. Everybody's, you know, it works for everybody. Who cares if you like it? Well, it matters. Because if you, <laughs> if you really, really hate what you're doing, you're not going to want to do it even if you don't see that in yourself. Sometimes we can be blind to the most basic facts about ourselves. But now to completely change uh, topics, Photoshop. So, Photoshop, yes. So I started my, you know, interneting web stuff back in 1996, as the, the slide tells me. Um, I was using Windows 3.11. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Um, yeah. So I got uh, Photoshop 3. Sweet. They added layers. It was good. And um, found a copy of Internet Explorer 3 on an AOL uh, diskette and Notepad. Good stuff. Just for reference, this is what Mario looked like in 96. So good. And Mario Today. So now. Now imagine, so take the concept of how much better Mario looks and compare Notepad, or yeah, Notepad.exe from 96 and VS Code today. It's like, you can kind of see it, right? It's, it's the same exact thing, except infinity better. Just like, I mean, look at his hair, right? It's so good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's kind of rolling out his eyes at us checking out his hair, but it's fine. So, this works. This totally works. This is Microsoft Word. You can totally write code in Microsoft Word. Who here uses Microsoft Word to, no, I'm kidding. But just look, look at the pixels. Yeah. Right, so what's the point? What are we talking about? How does this relate to JavaScript, et cetera? You gotta think about, you know, the tools that you have in your tool belt, the things that you've mastered, influence your perception of what problems exist. If you only have certain tools, you're incapable of perceiving certain problems. For example, this curly nail right here. It's like, I took this curly nail. It was like, I don't know why it's all wrinkly. I smashed it into the piece of wood. It worked. You know, but somebody else might have a different perspective on what you could do with this object to connect them in a more efficient manner, let's say. So, you know, here we're living in the future. Compare our constraints, our goals, what we're trying to achieve now. <laughs> everything was static back in the day. It was easy. Easy. It was hard because everything was terrible, but it was easy because there wasn't that many challenges. You know what I mean? Now, it's like the challenges are through the roof, but we have amazing tools. Except, you know, Photoshop 22 was released like last week, and it's awesome. But there are still a lot of people using Photoshop for web design and development and all this stuff. And that's, you know, not the best tool for the job, maybe. Um, so I started back in 96 as a print designer. I, uh, oh yeah, I moved on to front end engineering. Oh yeah, I'm Thomas Alot, by the way, hello. Um, and then I, I joined the Mutuals team back in 2008-ish. That's me. Oh, I'm so adorable. Um, and then I joined Facebook around 2012, and I, I, I got to be there when they invented all the awesome things. And, you know, see that little orange spike? I helped on React that much. It counts. It counts. <laughs> and <laughs> nowadays, I'm doing things that do stuff. Dot com. Consulting, training, uh, career coaching, stuff like that. Learn from my terrible experiences. I learned the hard way. Let me teach you so you can avoid my mistakes. So, um, oh, I accidentally switched to play mode. Okay, there we go. Whew. And um, on a personal note, I love being one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I love my kids. I love my wife. 
Oh, I said them in the wrong order, sorry. And I love things that do stuff, just generally. Um, let's see. So here, now we're, now we're finally talking about Framer. 27 minutes into the talk and, okay, no. The future of design is over there and is right here. Boom, look at all this awesome stuff. Yeah, it's got the whiz and the bang. So, you know, it's a design tool. It's a, currently a Mac app, runs on Mac. They're working on a Windows version, yes. Um, and it's entirely React-based. So every single thing that you see on screen is a React component, everything. The UI itself and everything that you're putting on the screen. So this little example, this little blue box right here, that is a stack component. Uh, it takes, when you drag it around a bunch of things, those things become the children of that thing, and then it uses Flexbox to lay out the things. You're welcome for that descriptive definition. And this is the trick, it gives you responsive layout. It's very important. And oh man, I'm dancing there. Ooh, that's embarrassing. I forgot about that part, sorry. Oh, oh my, okay. Ignore, just don't only look at the choir, okay. So, yeah. And then you can do all the basic, you know, rapid prototyping stuff. You know, it has all the, the fancy whiz bangs, the layouts, and all the, all the things. Oh, good grief, calm down. Okay, oh, so this is an important part. See this little uh, slidey thing? Uh, all these, oh, I wonder if my mouse, no, it doesn't, okay. So under slider on the, on the side there, oh, I can point at the screen, is uh, those are the props. You can visually set the props that are passed into this instance of this component. Uh, and I, I'll show you, if I have any time left, how to actually define these things later. Okay, so let me zoom through a lot of this. Okay, I hope you don't have epilepsy or anything. I'm sorry. Ooh, okay. All right, sorry. Next. All right, and we're back to uh, brain stuff. Okay, so more colored globs, yes. Okay, so now we're talking about things that energize you and drain you. So, um, some things energize you, some things drain, drain you. For example, me being up here in front of all of y'all really energizes me. <laughs> but me sitting alone in a dark room coding all day really drains me. I didn't realize this fact, this very basic fact about myself for 20 years. So I highly recommend that you learn more about yourself so that you don't also be drained by stuff. So, um, let's see. So, You've got facts and concepts. These are the things that we observe and organize. So we organize facts and concepts, which is highly related to certainty. You have certainty that you know, the roof isn't gonna collapse and things aren't gonna go insane and that your coworkers are not going to implement everything in hooks while you're away. You have to have a certain level of certainty that things are going to stay stable. But on the flip hand, you also need a certain level of you know, gathering in new information. Variety, changing things. If nothing ever changes, then that's death. <laughs> nothing changes again. So the trick is to balance these two things, the, um, the chaos and the control. Warning, oh crap, I forget about this part. Sorry, sorry. Some people get stressed out if you throw everything away and start over from scratch every time there's a new cool thing. Guess how many decades it took me to learn this very basic fact about human nature? Spoiler alert, not fewer than two. Okay, so, and that's more about the globs. Now we can get back to Framer. Yeah, Framer. Okay, so, the Framer X store, you can think of it like NPM and Yarn, because it is literally NPM. It is a, they have their own NPM server that serves NPM packages. Oh, sorry, that was a little fast. So they have um, a bunch of components that people, actually packages full of components that people have put onto their store, their NPM-ish store. Um, most of them are design related, but a lot of them are real, literal production NPM packages that they have just added a little bit of, of extra stuff to to expose them to the UI. The, um, here's an example of one of them. Um, Notice there's a bunch of faces. Some of them are tiny. This is because of a component called tiny faces. And here it is. And let's see, so let me scoot through and show you the code. 
So basically, it, it is literally just a React component. It calls the Tiny Faces API, renders some stuff. It's just a completely normal React component. They just publish it to the store. So here's ant components. I'm just checking my time. Um, it's the literal ant components components, um, except packaged up so that you can use it in the design tool. So here I have uh, the preview up. So you can, these are all literally the exact same code that run in production that you can use in design. This is such a huge step forward for design. I don't know how many people here are designers, but like, <laughs> normally you have to, to take the design that's in, used in production and completely re-implement it and get all the pixels just right, and then it changes here, and you have to keep it in sync. Here, you just literally use the exact same code in design that you have in production. There's no syncing. There's no config. It just works. So you just do it, because it's all just React, because React is so awesome. I love React so much. OK, ant components. And um, so here's where they live on the side. You can think of those as like the, the class definition. And then when it sits on the screen, that's like an instance of the thing. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to get through. So um, here you can see on the side more props. Oh, once I select it, I think. Yeah, there it goes. Uh, and I zoom in. Yeah, so here are all the props that you can pass into that ant design component. There's the type of the icon, um, whether it's spinning. And you can just read the slides, I guess. Uh, and the theme. And same goes for buttons. Uh, da -da -da -da. Size, type, whether it's a circle. You know, just the regular thing. So this, this fancy thing here, this is uh, the X-ray component. Let me show you that one. Uh, I don't have to do it. There. Yeah, the X-ray grid. It's just a regular React component where it, it renders its children in this like blue style. It like does fancy stuff, walking through the children, doing wacky stuff. And somebody just re repackaged it for um, Framer, and it just works. And it's much more useful in design than it is in, on a website, because, I don't know, that would be a weird thing to put on your website. But it'd be neat. All right, let me scoot through this. What was I doing when I recorded this? Oh, messing around with noodles. OK. Lottie, now this is my favorite one. Oh, man. OK. Not to overhype it, but just look at all the whizzing and the banging. It's got all of it. Somebody, somebody even animated the React logo. Um, so what is going on here? Um, oh, whoops. <laughs> OK, there we go. Sorry, there's a bug in my playing thing. I didn't take the time to. I, built, I didn't build it in React. What, what was wrong with me? So stupid. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so Lottie, you just drag the little Lottie thing over. Uh, you drag it, okay, yeah, drag it, it's suddenly an animation, boom, done. Um, and then you can just set the JSON, it's just a URL to some JSON that describes the animation. You can generate that, that animation with uh, the body moving tool, or you can just go to the Lottie Files website and download a bunch of awesome animations. And then just use them in production and in your design tool, the literally the exact same code. And then here's a functioning map. Like these are three maps that I, I slapped together. Look, a circle map, neat. Why not, right? And let's see, yeah, more maps, yeah. Just here are the, the different styles that you can do. Map styles, LA terrain, looks fancy. Oh, it's Shanghai. Amsterdam, all right. YouTube, OK, this is going to be embarrassing. What was I thinking? Yeah, so this is a video of me trying to learn uh, Angular. So um, it works, but I don't like it. Sorry. It works for a lot of other people in the tribe. A lot of other people in the tribe like it, but I don't. I'm sorry, Angular people. Oh, sorry, OK, there I am in fast mode. Uh, so yeah, so you, you see there's props. You should just you know, paste in the URL. Was I singing? What is happening? Why would, it, why would I use that screenshot? So 
So the biggest problem of all this is that your components aren't here. And it makes these adorable SVG people very sad, but that's easy to fix. Um, because you just go in there and make them happy. Uh, or excited, apparently. Yes, so much. See how easy it is to make everybody happy. You can just do it. You just set props on them, and then they're happy, right? So yeah, if only it were that easy. But it is. So here, um, I took the React Kawaii, how do you pronounce that, Kawaii um, component, and I implemented it. I brought it to Framer. And this seems to be messed up. I might have to use the pen. Hmm, yeah, it's messed up. But trust me, I did it, and it's done. Technology, ah, there we go, yes, debugging. I, I refreshed the browser, yeah. So, um, so here's how you start to create a, uh, let me show you how the, the difficult part. So how do you normally start with, uh, with a React project? Absolutely. Is there something easier than that? Of course. Um, so you cl double click that, you, then you click that, and then it's React. And then you click that, um, the components tab, menu bar item, and then you click new, and you give it a name from code, click create and edit, and then there's your code. But it's already running, so you can just drag it in and boom, it's running. No command line, no terminal, no nothing. It's all React, it's all, um, it's the exact same React as everywhere else. But what's cool about it is that there are you know, a quadrillion infinity of de designers out there who are brilliant, but they just, the, the idea of going into the terminal and the code, and it's just a, so draining that they're not gonna go into it. But this, it makes it so easy, it's just like, of course they'll do it. And they're so brilliant, we want them as part of the ecosystem because they have ideas. They have solutions to problems we don't even know are problems. And with them, with these powers, what could they do? You know, what can all of us do if we work together as a single community of design engineers? I promised somebody I would not say that, and so I had to. Design engineers. Yeah, so um, this, so the, the um, it actually took me about 20 minutes to do this, so I'm not gonna, for the next 20 minutes, no, I'm, I'm just gonna scrub through it really quick. So basically I go to the website, I uh, install the NPM package, uh, and then I paste in the, the code that it says to do, and then boom, it works. Uh, but then there's more, because then I wanna get all the different options, the props working. Um, let me show you the props, that's interesting. So I put a bunch of them on there, then I have to look at the source code to see what props there are that I can call. And I paste in all the different kinds. You can have a cute little browser. You can have a cute little ice cream. I want a cute little ice cream. I'm suddenly cute little hungry. So this is the important part here, the property controls thing. That uh, is the, the framer specific. Uh, it's a static object that you assign to your uh, component that tells framer how to visually lay out your props on screen and what the, like, the different options are and stuff. And um, I saw somebody on Twitter defined it uh, only in development mode so that you can put, really, literally put, litter that stuff all over your production code and then strip it out for, for uh, production build. You should do that. So then I define, okay, the face, go in there and figure out, okay. So this is where TypeScript is super handy. Who here likes TypeScript? Yeah. I, oh, I can't go back. I was so obnoxiously against types back, like in my, the Mood Tools days. I was so wrong. It just makes life so much easier. But you know. <laughs> okay, so then you define the the available options, and then oh, did you know you can uh, have multiple carrots in VS Code at the same time and type in multiple places at once? It's so handy. So I just turned all those things. I just quoted all of them. And then Prettier laid it out. Oh man, Prettier is so good. What did we do before Prettier? I guess it was just uglier. Mm. 
None of this is rehearsed, folks. Well, I'm now using a switch statement, apparently. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. A bunch of stuff. Okay, now, now I have the cute little ice cream. Oh, so here's another important thing is uh, see how it's changing the height based on the height of the thing that I'm dragging in the design thing. Oh, man, words are hard. That goes into the, you know, the little yellow blob. That one's low for me. Or is it the green one? I forget. Um, so basically the height is being passed in from Framer itself. So um, by default, everything's absolutely positioned unless you use something like the stack or one of those other components that gives you uh, Flexbox or whatever. Ooh, uh, somebody should do one with grid. Anybody want? Who wants to do a grid? Yes, he's going to do it. OK. He's got dibs. But you can race him to it. All right. Oh, man. So yesterday, there was a, there was a new update to, to Framer. Um, and they just added the ability to, to pass in multiple children to a component. So if you define um, this.props.children in your component, then you get a little purple noodle arm in Framer that you can drag to some other component, and then that component becomes the child of the other component. It used to be that you, it, you would only accept one child. Now you can have as many as you want, like a basic feature. But, you know, it's there now, so good. Um, let's see. Oh. Here's the cute little browser, uh, changing some of the default props. And let's see. And then I'll fast forward to showing you how I actually published it to the thing. Da, 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 da. We're almost there. We're in the home stretch. I've got two minutes left. I'm going to use them all. <laughs> all right, so oh, there's the moods. You've got to have the moods. They can't all be excited. That's unacceptable. We cannot have all of our characters be, oh, that love struck, that's acceptable. Happy, love struck, but not, not sad. Shocked, fine. You can be pleasantly shocked, pleasantly surprised, or unpleasantly surprised, but you know, let's not do that instead. OK. And so uh, though, uh, uh, here's an important point. You need to save the file. <laughs> So the, the way that, uh, that Framer X packages works, uh, so there's a dot Framer X file on the file system that you save from the thing. So in Photoshop, you have the PSD, which is a, just a bunch of random um, binary data. In Framer X, it is a zip file with a package.json in it and all of your source code and a JSON that def des defines your design, and that's it. It is literally a React project. Every single Framer X file is a React project. So when you publish something to the store, it literally just publishes your FramerX project, which is also an NPM module, to the store. And then boom, it's on the store. Well, I had to add the artwork and edit the readme, but you know. <laughs> but it's there now. And now I've run out of time. It's going to beep any second. And that's all, folks. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.